And I begin to have to lay there and I begin to have to think about what's going to happen when I leave here. And they're left here by themselves. And I'm a type of parent that becomes very uh, real about things. And I don't like to sugarcoat stuff. And I don't like to be blind to stuff. And I like to think about stuff. And I come to the reality that one day, I got to leave there. I ain't due to live better, not yet. So even though I have eternal life on the inside of me, this body still got to go back to the dust of the earth. And when I leave here, what is going to happen to those two girls that I'm raising? When you got perverted men that don't mind taking little girls and selling them, and I'm going to talk today. And don't mind selling them. And they call it trafficking. They don't mind taking our little boys and holding them hostage and causing them to have sex with any and everybody. And they won't preach it out well. What is going to happen to them with men that have perverted minds and, and don't mind beating women upside the head? Don't mind raping them and feeling as though there's nothing wrong with it. What is going to happen to them when I'm gone? When I leave here. And I closed my eyes. So I had to look up to heaven, thank you, Lord Jesus. And I had to look up to heaven, and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, they're in your hands. Yeah. I said, Lord, they're in your hands. And I had to pray like the Lord prayed for his disciples. He said, Lord, And those that reared us up in holiness and taught us the priesthood. 
precepts of God. Even when they leave here, he said, as I was with Moses, so shall I be in that with Jesus. I'm going to be the same God. It's easy to uphold standards and 
see us. But thank you, Lord Jesus, that if it's not in your heart, God sees it. Everything we're doing is there. If it's not in our hearts. So the Lord wants to care of this generation that we can no longer play and go through the formalities of church. Because the reality is what we're facing is going to take more than our dancing and shouting. It's going to take more than our singing and our playing. But it's going to take somebody to stand on the word of God. Because do y'all not know, I believe it was Minister uh, Andre that said it last night. He said, do you not know that now on reality television, that reality shows up that are contradicting the word of God. And they're giving the world an image of the church. And I thought the preachers of LA in Detroit was uh, bad enough. My wife came to me the other day showing me a video of someone that uh, about to come on Lifetime and it's a bunch of so-called prophetess. Lord Jesus. Somebody got to work on it. Lord and I don't mean that we got to move and holler among ourselves and do it. Yeah. Because you have a solid people been fussing and fighting with each other for a long time. And the fuck that we need to let know, Brother Justin, they don't know nothing. Because I run down to Bishop D's church and hoop and holler about doctrinal standards that they already know about. And I'll preach 20 and 30 minutes and say I'm going to clean up the house with stuff they already know about. And it profits absolutely This generation can't be that type of generation. Not with what we face. How much time I got? Okay. We can't be that type of generation. We cannot be the type of generation that continues on the pointless interactions and debating that's been going on for years. We can't be this type of generation. Yes, the word of God is right. And it ain't changing. But the Lord never told you to run your mouth about the standard. That ain't what he told us to do. The standard is called a standard for a reason. It means stand on it. You ain't got to tell everybody what we believe. Just stand on it. When you got brothers in the house of God leading praise and worship, as our brother testified so beautifully last night, but yet said he was contemplating suicide, you got to be crazy to think that I'm gonna preach on the same stuff over and over again, and somebody going home and think about blowing the brains out. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus. I, I just don't, I don't know, I don't mind, I just talk today. I, I don't want to drive three and four and eight hours for the same old stuff and not encounter God. Thank you, Lord.
and we have to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Sensitive enough to know that there's somebody right now with a sickness in their body. Yes, it is. And I, I'm not going to come up here and preach for anything. I don't do it, brother. But I'm going to preach something that will go down to the depths of that body yes. and begin to do something on whatever issue that thing is. Thank you, Lord. Can I set the record straight today? When you look at the book of Acts, a lot of stuff that we preach and what we do, the apostles never preached. I got to drop some revelation today, brother. And I dare anybody to try to condemn it. Can I talk the way they talk? Walking in shoes or barefoot. You can't go in the book of Acts and show me when the apostle Paul stood on Mars Hill to them folk that were worshiping false gods, bowing down to idol gods, and had an altar for an unknown God. And tell me and make me believe that the apostle Paul stood on Mars Hill and started talking about wedding bands. With no true God on his side, but one day. 